Good morning. The book I have for you all today is The Berenstain Bears, Trouble with Pets. Cubs don't expect the big job they will get when they jump up and down and beg for a pet. And this is another book for The Berenstain Bears by Stan and Jan Berenstain. The Berenstain Bears, Trouble with Pets. Goodbye, little bird, said Sister Bear. Fly away and be happy. On her finger was the sparrow that the bear family had taken in because it had an injured leg. Papa Bear had made a splint for it out of a toothpick and strips of tape. Brother and sister had named it Tweety and had taken care of it for about a week. But now it was time to remove the splint and let the bird go back to nature where it belonged. It hopped onto a twig, then took wing. Before you could say Tweety, it was out of sight. I'm going to miss our little bird said Sister sadly. Tweety was such a nice little pet. Tweety wasn't a pet, dear, said Mom. Not a real pet, anyway. It was an injured bird that we helped get well so it could go back to the forest. Why don't we get a real pet, Mama? asked Sister. Other cubs have pets, said Brother. Why can't we? Cousin Freddy has a dog. Lizzie Bruin has a cat. Too Tall Grizzly has a snake. Well said Mama as they climbed the front steps of the treehouse. I suppose it is something we could think about. Gee, Mama, said Brother, what's there to think about? There's quite a lot to think about, she said. A pet is a big responsibility. A pet has to be fed, cared for, kept clean. What do you think, Papa? I think a dog would be nice, said Papa. But a dog is an especially big responsibility, protested Mama. A dog needs shots, it needs to be trained and walk, and there are dog laws. A big dog, said Papa, about so high that it can go fetch and play frisbee. We'll take care of it, Mama, cried the cubs. We promise, we promise. Now let's think about the word responsibility really quick. That's a really big word. Responsibility means that you're responsible for something. It means you're in charge of taking care of something and making sure that it is its best. For example, you may be in charge of taking care of your room. It is your responsibility to clean your room, so it is your job to take care of your room. Remember now, said Mama as they pulled into the car, we're going to the pet shop just to look. Choosing a pet, especially a dog, is serious business. Speaking of dogs, said Papa, pointing to a sign as they drove by Farmer Ben's place. Puppies available, see Farmer Ben, said Brother, reading the sign aloud. How about that? Ben's dog, Bess, must have had puppies. May we look at them, Mama, cried Sister. Oh, please, Mama, please. Before Mama and Papa could answer, Papa said, no harm in looking, and pulled into Farmer Ben's driveway. Ben's dog, Bess, had indeed had pups, five of the cutest roly-polyest little balls of fur you've ever seen. Farmer Ben picked one up and put it in Sister's arms. What beautiful brown eyes, she said. May we have this one, Mama? Please, may we, may we, please? Most pups have brown eyes, said Ben, but I do think that one is the pick of the litter. It's yours if you like, a gift from Bess and me. Now, I will say, when we went to just look like these cubs did, we ended up bringing Maggie home, which is a wonderful thing. So, sometimes when you just go look, you end up with a puppy. Goodness, said Mama, that's very generous of you, Ben. I don't really know what to say. Yes, say yes, shouted the cubs, jumping up and down. It certainly is a cute little thing, she said. All right, then, yes. Brother and sister were overjoyed. Thank you, thank you, Farmer Ben, they shouted. Then after they calmed down a bit, Brother said, Hmm, our pup's going to need a name. How about King or Prince or maybe Duke? Farmer Ben, who was an expert in such matters, took a quick look under the pup's tail and said, The only trouble with those names, Brother, is that this pup is a girl. Of course, they couldn't take their new pet home with them. It would need its mother's milk for a couple more weeks, but there were plenty of puppy talk as they headed home, talking about names, talking about where the puppy would sleep, and talk about who would take care of it. 
Remember now, said Mamma, you've promised to take care of the new pup, to feed, and water, and clean up after it when it has accidents. What kind of accidents? asked Sister. We'll discuss that later, Mamma said. Brother and sister couldn't believe how lucky they'd been, a new puppy for their very own. That night before falling asleep, they thought about some of the wonderful things they would do with their new pet. Sister thought about dressing it in doll's clothes and pushing it in her doll carriage. She thought about introducing it to her stuffed toys. Perhaps they could have a tea party. Brother's thoughts were quite different. He thought about winning the blue ribbon at the Bear Country Dog Show. He thought about how fine it would be to shout, MUSH! as his great dog pulled him through the deep snow. But of course, a puppy isn't a toy to be dressed in dog clothes. It's a living creature with a mind and a matter and a nature of its own. It would be a long time before the pup could compare the blue ribbons, could, could compete for blue ribbons. It would be an even longer time before it could pull anything through the snow. Why do you think the puppy couldn't pull Brother Bear through the snow quite yet when they first get that puppy? What might be the reason? There was no question about it. Brother and sister had a lot to learn about puppies, so Mama and Papa decided that a trip to the library was in order. They took out a book called Puppy Care. When the big day came, the Bear family had a puppy care plan all worked out. First, they stopped off at the police station to get her registered. Well, what's the little lady's name? asked Officer Marguerite. The pup would need a license with her name and address on it in case she got lost. But brother and sister still hadn't agreed on a name. What to do? It seems to me that Officer Margaret just named our puppy, said Mama. Little lady sounds like an excellent name to me. So the puppy left the police station, station, left the police station with a name as well as a license. So what's our little puppy's name? Little lady. Next, a quick stop at the pet shop for a puppy harness and leash. Then a very important stop at the vets for a checkup and shots. Little lady didn't like the shots one bit. Brother and sister knew just how she felt. They even sort of knew how parents must feel when their cubs have to get shots. That's very true. I do not like taking Maggie to get her shots. It makes me so sad because I know she's sad. Now it was time to introduce little lady to her new home. The bears had already gotten food for her and had made a puppy box out of cardboard cotton, a cardboard carton and an old blanket. They had placed the box in the kitchen where it was nice and warm, with the door closed, of course. Puppies tend to get into mischief, and there wasn't much harm she could do in the kitchen. Little Lady sniffed all around the kitchen, then curled up in her box and went to sleep. At first, the cubs argued about whose turn it was to feed water and walk the pup. It's my turn! No, it's my turn! But after a while, they began to argue about whose turn it wasn't. It's your turn! I cleaned up after the last accident. No, it's your turn. I cleaned up after the last accident. Mama solved that problem by posting the puppy care schedule on the wall. Those schedules are very helpful for keeping up with what job is yours. Not that the little puppy was all work and no fun. Little lady was indeed a lot of fun. In fact, it was so much fun watching her that the bear family didn't watch much television anymore. She chased her tail. She did somersaults. She fought her rubber dog bone. And she got into some of the strangest positions. And of course, she grew. She grew so much that the Bear family started calling her Lady instead of Little Lady. And like all puppies, she loved to chew. Then one day, somebody forgot to close the kitchen door while the family went shopping. When they got back, they found that Lady had chewed up half the living room. How would you feel if you came in and you saw this when you got home from school or from shopping and your dog had done this? The time had come for Lady to have her own house out in the yard. Papa built a fine, sturdy dog house. Then he chicken wired the fence to keep her safely in the yard. Lady loved her house. She was even more fun in the yard than she was in the house. She chased leaves in the fall, snowflakes in the winter, cherry blossoms in the spring, and butterflies in the summer. And as the years went by, Lady became more than a pet. She became another member of the family to love and enjoy. The end. And just like I said on our last book, all of our Bear and Sea Bears books, 
have the option of looking for other books in that same series. So I hope that you guys can possibly find one and read it. Please share with me if you do. And I hope that you have enjoyed this story.